David, we have reached my favorite portion of the game show. And as someone like yourself who has worked on so many game shows behind the scenes for so many years, now's your chance to prove how great of a game player you are because it's time for the game of the day. Game of the day. Now, as we talked about earlier, your first introduction to the game show industry was as a contestant on the $10,000 pyramid back in the 70s. Well, over 40 years later, you now have a chance to once again climb to the top of the six-category summit as we play the Winner's Circle. The Winner's Circle. Now, David, before the show, I enlisted the help of a mutual friend to actually create all of the Winner's Circle rounds that we'll be playing during this game. The reason being is that I didn't want to know any of the answers before the start of the game so that we can play an authentic and legitimate version of the winner's circle. So David, please help me in thanking a guy who calls you his mentor and a guy who is no stranger to the winner's circle as he is the judge on ABC's current version of the $100,000 pyramid, the one and only John Ritchie Jr. Thank you so much, John, for creating this game for David and I to play. And I will do my very best to help your mentor become the greatest Winner's Circle guesser in the show's history. So here's how this works, David. I told John you were coming on the show, and I asked him to create four Winner's Circle rounds. He then sent me the rounds in an email file, which I can honestly say I have not opened. In fact, I will not see any of the answers for a specific round until I say, here is our first subject, and the clock starts for that round. So John created four Winner's Circle bonus rounds that you might see on an actual episode of Pyramid. As you know, David, there are six categories in every round, each progressing in difficulty, and the goal is to get to the top of the pyramid in 60 seconds or less. I'll be given the clues, and despite this being an audio-based show with nobody being able to see me, I am assuring you and the listeners that I will be playing by the rules. So I will not be using my hands, and just like on the show, I can only give a list of items that fit the subject. If I get too descriptive, I have to disqualify myself and forfeit the top amount of points we can win for that round. And while we're on the subject of points, each category increases in point value. The first category is worth 50 points, the second is worth 100 points, the third is worth 150 points, then 200 points, 250 points, and the top category is worth 300 points. However, if you guess all six categories and we make it to the top of the pyramid in 60 seconds or less, we will earn a total of 2,000 points. As a partnership, we're going to play all four Winner's Circle rounds, and if we can accumulate a total of 4,000 points or more, we can declare ourselves Winner's Circle winners. Now, over the course of the game show's history, I have played the Winner's Circle twice. The first time was with legendary Pyramid celebrity player Teresa Ganzel, and the second time was with the head writer of ABC's The $100,000 Pyramid, David Levinson Wilk. So far, I am 1-1 and as I unfortunately lost with Teresa Ganzel, but I won with David Levinson-Wilk. So David, aside from you hopefully getting your first game of the day win on the game show, I have the chance to get myself above a 500 average and earn a 2 out of 3 record for the winner's circle. And just so everyone knows, these are all brand new rounds that John has created for me. And to reiterate, I have not seen any of the answers beforehand. So David, after transitioning in your career from Pyramid Player to Pyramid Producer, are you ready to get back to your humble game show beginnings and play a game of Pyramid? Absolutely. Then let's play The Winner's Circle. Remember David, we have to accumulate at least 4,000 points over the four rounds, and let's begin with round one of The Winner's Circle. And as I open the email file, the title page says... Don't flip to the next page. And remember, the judge is an asshole. (laughs) For the listeners who don't know the story behind the phrase, the judge is an asshole, why don't you explain it, David? Well, it evolved. It started with the fake feud between Vicki Lawrence and Dick Clark. The time that actually started, Dick would come in after a big board if they didn't win, and he would give a few good clues, which I had said I would give him ultimate clues. So Vicky didn't win, and Vicky needed to win always. Vicky's like a fierce game player. I love her to death. So he came in and he said what a perfect clue would have been for that category, and the contestant got it. And Vicky said, well, fine. I'm here sweating bullets, 
and you're standing over there, cool as a cucumber, and then you come strolling in here with the perfect answer and make me feel like an ass. That was the beginning of the feud. Then, you know, a different set of shows, I had to buzz her, and I always hated having to buzz Vicky, but I had to buzz her. She gave an illegal clue, and she started giving Dick a really hard time and Dick said, look, Vicky, it's not my fault. It's what the judge said. And she said, well, then the judge is an asshole. And they kind of bleeped the whole part of asshole. And what John is referring to is there's this famous autographed picture I have of Vicky where it says to David, my most favorite asshole, love Vicky. And to this day, Vicky and I love each other. We're not as often in touch as I'd like to be, but I love her because, you know, after all the game show stuff, I produced her talk show. So we have a long history. I know which Vicki Lawrence moment you were referring to when Dick Clark came back with the perfect clue. The category at the top of the pyramid was things that crash, and Dick said the 1929 stock market. Brad fact. That's right, which is the perfect clue. Airplanes. Things that fly. Uh, 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 things that are pressurized. Uh, a, a drug addict. Uh, things that use, uh, needle, things that come down. Uh, things that go up. Uh, wounded things that get high. Birds. Uh, things that lie fall on the ground. Things that drop. Uh, glass. Things that break. Uh, things that. Airplanes. <laughs> the 1929 yes. stock market. Things that oh, crash. Yes. Oh. I love it when you come in and give the absolute <laughs> the perfect answer. Bullets, you come strolling in and give the perfect answer and make me feel like an ass. <laughs> See you around. We'll, be right back. well, hopefully, I can give you all the perfect clues as we play the winner circle. David, let's get into the game. 60 seconds is on the clock for 2,000 points. Here is our first subject go. The faucet, the spigot. Part of a sink? Yes. I'm the capital of England. You are London. Yes. Bubble. Spearmint. Types of gum. Yes. You point with them. You cross them. You pick your nose with them. What you do with your fingers? Yes. A bar, a nightclub, a concert. Things that are loud. Yes. A judge, a newly bathed person. Things that are clean. A judge. Oh, time's up. Damn. A judge, a newly bathed person. Oh, things that wear a robe? Yes. Damn. People who wear a robe was right. But that's okay, David. We didn't get the 2,000 points, but we are on the board with 750 points, which isn't bad for round one. Okay. We have 3,250 points to go, and we have three rounds left. This is now round two. 60 seconds is on the clock for 2,000 points. Here is our first subject. Go. Two, four, six, eight. Even numbers? Yes. You put me on a boo-boo. What a band-aid says. Yes. The antenna. The screen. Parts of a television? Yes. Florida. Texas. New Mexico. Yes. A spell. A wizard's spell. Things that are cast? I'm going to pass on that one. Biking. Sleeping late. Did you go on vacation? Brunch. Outdoor activities. You should do in the country, things mm. you do on the weekend. Yes, yes, yes. A wizard's spell. A wand. Things that are magical. Yeah! You got it! Okay. <laughs> With one second left, the buzzer beater. Oh, yeah, I did that on purpose. 
Weekend activities. That was a tough one. I don't know where that came from, but I'm glad it did. I'm glad it did too because that earned us 2,000 points and our total is now 2,750 points. Plus, since we're only 1,250 points away from a win, if we get to the top of the pyramid during this round, David, we will win the game. All right. This is round three. 60 seconds is on the clock for 2,000 points. Here is our first subject. Go. Pigs, hay. Things on a farm? Yes. I go hoot. What an owl says. Yes. The mezzanine, the orchestra. Parts of a theater? Yes. Duct, scotch. Kinds of tape? Yes. First President George. Actor Denzel. Oh, people named Washington. Yes. Spices. Discounted clothing. Things on a rack. Yes! Yes! And with those 2,000 points we just earned, our total is now 4,750 points, which means, David, we have won this game of the winner's circle. But I don't like to leave rounds unplayed. So although we already won, David, would you like to play round four to see if we can go to the top of the pyramid three out of four times? Absolutely. Very good. This is round four. 60 seconds is on the clock for 2,000 points. Here is our first subject. Go. Rock and roll, jazz. Types of music. Yes. I am the leader of this college class. What a professor said. Yes. Molars, canines, incisors. Types of teeth. Correct. Cereal, candy, coffee. Things in a box. Let's pass this one for now. A nightworm. A newborn baby's skin. A party stick. A firefly. Things that glow? Yes. A shopping cart. A baby carriage. An elevator button. Things you push. Yes, yes, and time's up. We got things you push in time, so we'll get the points for that category. The one I passed on, I said cereal, candy, coffee, soda would have been a good clue. Things with sugar? Yep, that's it. But despite not getting things with sugar, we did get 850 points that round, which brings our final total to 5,600 points. So once again, David, congratulations. We have won this game of the winner's circle. David, how does it feel now after you've proven that not only are you a great pyramid judge, but you're also a great pyramid game player? Oh, it feels amazing. To this day, I love playing the game, especially with good players. It's still like one of my favorite things to do. You know, with John and Mandel and stuff, of course, we play with each other, but, you know, we've played with some of the pyramid celebrities. In fact, there was one evening, and it turned out to be not that long before we lost him. We had a game night at Eileen Graff's house, and Bob came. And he would never play. And Bob actually played the game and he had such a good time. It was great. And you know what screwed him up on the big pyramid? Types of shampoo. And he said, what the hell would I know about that? He's bald as a billiard ball. He didn't know the name of one shampoo, <laughs> but otherwise he played great. Well, as you just said, you like playing pyramid with great players. And I hope I lived up to your expectations, David. It was a great partner to play pyramid with. You absolutely did. You were great. That was really fun. Thank you so much, David, and I'm so glad you had fun. And that was the game of the day, The Winner's Circle. The Winner's Circle. 